welcome to the Ariel show hope you're doing fantastic it is Wednesday as I'm filming this I've got packing and laundry going on and going to uh, tour rehearsals later this afternoon and then hitting the road again tomorrow um, I'm filming today on my iPhone because unfortunately um, super bummer but that amazing camera that we all saved up for over the summer that my patreon community helped me get that unfortunately was stolen while we were on tour this this past run so we were uh, our van was parked in a hotel parking lot in San Diego and we wake up the next morning and our van had been broken into and that was one of the items taken which is heartbreaking heartbreaking but um, the good news is I think we have insurance I think so I will let you know we'll find out today's episode is for Molly who asked for some ideas on how to stand up for yourself I'm assuming this came from the fact that last week I did um, an episode on my biggest regrets and I mentioned that one of them was any time that I have not stood up for myself and that got me thinking I learned to stand up for myself because at first I didn't and so I'm almost grateful for that there were a few times that I kind of like was letting myself be mistreated because it it built up uh, enough like strength in me where you know would think about those situations later and I'd be like oh hell no never again like I'm not gonna put up with that or I wish I could go back in that situation now feeling more confident and like redo that and like I've gotten all up in their face and say you can't talk to me like that or whatever so I've been able to build up that muscle because I have some regrets where where I was maybe more of a doormat and now I'm like well never again I need to make up for that the rest of my life and, and not let stuff not let myself be mistreated so now I would consider myself much better at this than I used to be but have patience with yourself have compassion on yourself it's almost like you kind of got to learn through some trial and error feeling what feels comfortable for you what doesn't really standing up for ourselves is all about having boundaries in our lives and then realizing when they get crossed and then deciding how to handle that when they do get crossed I will say if you have a boundary and somebody crosses it it's pretty time sensitive that you address it quickly like right away if they learn they can cross it again like then it's then you're the doormat and then they've learned that your boundaries are just all talk and and you're not gonna back it up and you're not gonna say anything so for example like if you're you know working a job and your coworkers like hey can you pick up my shift for me and you don't want to do it but you say yes and then this happens again and pretty soon you know all of your coworkers will see like oh she'll take the crappy shift like she doesn't care she doesn't push back so in, in that way you're you're making it easy for other people to take advantage of you so instead, you need a change of your strategy and you need to say no, and then you need to stick with it. And it really, like, I have to say it, that quote, we teach people how to treat us. I mean, that could not be any more true than in this scenario. And this reminds me of an experience I had recently. I was hanging out with a group of people and one girl ended up kind of sharing with me that this group had ended up saying some kind of disrespectful, like not super cool things to her. And I almost had a hard time like believing that or resonating with that and I told her I was like that's crazy like that's not been my experience with this group of people at all like they've always been awesome and she goes well yeah Ariel because you don't let people talk to you like that and I was like well, if you know that the difference is don't let people talk to you like that then what she could do is also not let people talk to her like that obviously that doesn't let the group off the hook like if, if someone is mistreating people on a routine basis like that needs to be addressed but also we have a lot more power than we think so let's not wait for the bullies to change or to learn like let's let us put up our fences let us have our own boundaries in place so we don't let it happen to us and here you have to use your judgment if somebody is mistreating you and it's because they don't know then you don't need to go all gung-ho about them but like you can't treat me like this like just bring it to their awareness be like hey I kind of felt stepped on when this happened like use your best judgment to see if this was kind of an anomaly or if this person really is like a horrible person if they're a horrible person I don't think that you uh, standing up for yourself is going to change them maybe they'll temporarily change their behavior maybe you can set up some boundaries where like they literally like can't get to you however sometimes the only option is to remove yourself from that situation whether it's quitting that job finding a new group of friends whatever it is if it's possible to show with your with your actions like I'm not putting up with this so far as that I'm removing myself I think that's a very powerful way to handle this and Molly if I'm being honest standing up for myself is something that I've had to very consciously work on it hasn't always come naturally to me but I really I have gotten better and I have seen the progress in my own life uh, just like super recently we played a show and it was an awesome show it was like the room was packed it felt amazing and afterwards I asked our tour manager like what was the final headcount how many people were there how many tickets were sold and he was like well that's the thing and he told me a number that was significantly less than the actual number in the room and I know this because I've played thousands of shows and I have I, I know what the crowd looks like in comparison to 
how many tickets were sold, like what that number is. I can visually gauge it. And the number that my tour manager told me that the promoter had given him was 50% of what the rest of us all agreed the number was. And so it was clear in that moment that the promoter was trying to take advantage of us and steal money from us, actually. And so um, I sat in the van for a second. I was like, okay, Ariel, what do you want to do here? And I thought, do I want to be the kind of person that lets this happen? or don't want to be the badass that stands up for myself. And so you guys, I was like in my pajamas, I just like put my clothes right back on, I marched back into that menu and I gave the promoter an earful. Did it work? No, it did not. I could not prove uh, to the promoter that I knew, that we all knew, you know, what the crowd size was as opposed to him, which was a super bummer, we got screwed. However, I'm still proud of myself for how I handled that. Like that was exactly how I, I wish I would have handled that. I'm happy with that. And so make decisions that you can be proud of for a long time. You can say, even if the results didn't change, at least you are teaching other people, you're teaching the universe and you're growing those muscles yourself. Like, no, 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 no. This isn't how it's going to go down. All right. That's what I got for you. Thanks for watching. This video will come out on Thursday for my patrons, which means we are playing in Indianapolis tonight. It will come out on Friday for the rest of the world, which means we are playing in St. Louis and then Decatur, Illinois, and then Pontiac. And then New York and just check out the flyer for all the dates. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. You're the best. You make my world go round. And I'll see some of you on tour. Bye. Get it out. Get your body out the